Hi everybody. Yes, we are back. We are back on the video format just like the old days, but now I've found some inexpensive equipment and some equipment, in my opinion, that I actually like better than the original equipment I was using, which was prehistoric and it just took forever to get my videos uploaded. But this will be much faster, more convenient. So again, I thank you for your patience on these first few videos where I had to do audio and pictures only. So we're definitely back doing videos the way we should be doing them all the time. Now let's talk about the Big Ten Leaders Division, and we're going to begin with Ohio State. Of course, you know they can't uh, go to a bowl game or go to the Big Ten title game this year because of probation. Um, but they were the last Big Ten school to actually win a national championship. That was 10 years ago. Um, even though they can't win a title this year, I get the feeling that in a year or two they're going to be contending for the national title once again. Because, for one, the probation did not slow down the recruiting, and then number two, during the offseason, they hired um, Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer, proven winner at Utah, of course, won two national championships at Florida, including one year where they beat the team that he's coaching for right now, Ohio State. For the Buckeyes, they'll have a lot of players that they played a year ago, although last year's team went 6-7. and seven. Most of those losses were by one touchdown or less, all but one of those games. Ohio State was competitive. Braxton Miller got thrown right into the fire as a freshman and actually didn't do too bad of a job at quarterback. Ran the ball well, um, only threw four interceptions, but one thing Urban Meyer wants to improve with Miller, though, is completing his passing percentage. We're talking about percentage that last year was only 52%. Ohio State will be going toward more of a vertical game this time as far as throwing, so that should not only increase uh, Miller's completion percentage, but it should also increase his confidence as well. So look for Miller to have a better year for Ohio State. And then the, the backfield, one of the best blocking fullbacks in the country in Zach Brown and running back Carlos Hyde. Um, he'll be the main guy in the backfield as far as tailback. And then receiver, Devin Smith returns. Ohio State, though, will have some work to do up front, replacing three of their five offensive linemen, including the center as well as one side of the line. Defensively, this is where I think the Buckeyes get even, returning eight starters, including two terrific defensive tackles in John Simon as well as Jonathan Hankins. Both are um, All-America caliber. I think they're that good. Five players who last season started in the defensive backfield at one point are back for the Buckeyes, including Bradley Roby, but they've got to replace some linebackers. September schedule for um, Ohio State as far as the first four games should be gravy. All four at the horseshoe with the toughest game against being, uh, being against Cal. Ohio State should be able to handle the Golden Bears. The Big Ten opener is at Michigan State. That's September 29th. That could spell a loss later in the year. OSU also plays at Wisconsin. And there are some home games against both Nebraska as well as Michigan at the end of the year. And Ohio State will treat that Michigan game like a bowl game since Ohio State cannot go to one. There's no reason why Ohio State should not have at least a nine-win season. And look for next year with so many players coming back and with a year of experience, um, playing under Urban Meyer, look for Ohio State next year to perhaps win the Big Ten and be a national championship contender. Well, for Penn State, they're not going to be talking about national titles anytime soon, and they're not going to be talking about bowl games anytime soon. As bad as Ohio State's probation was, it was only for one year. How about getting slapped with four years of not being able to play in a bowl game or in the Big Ten title game or not being able to collect any Big Ten bowl revenue? And talking about massive reduction of scholarships over four years and plus scars that may never go away for that football team or for that university. Just a complete mess with Sandusky and the cover-up just makes you sick to your stomach. Bill O'Brien, the new head coach at Penn State, to say he's got a massive job to do is an understatement. Trying to put together a quality football team, hoping that he can keep um, his players there, keep them from transferring, and his starting running back, the guy who did so much last year for Penn State, um, Silas Red, it doesn't look like he's going to stay. He could very well go to uh, USC any day now. So that would be a massive loss for Penn State because he was basically their offense a year ago because the passing game was not even in the top 110 last year. And by the way, both those quarterbacks returned in um, Matt McGloin as well as Rob Bolton. Um, I'm not too confident right now. That, that Penn State's offense is going to be able to do much, especially if Red does not um, come back. And then you're looking at replacing most of those offensive linemen, too. Only four starters back, and it's only going to be three if Red doesn't return. 
Defensively, there's just as many question marks for Penn State. The linebacking core is pretty solid, though, with Glenn Carson as well as Gerald Hodges. But the secondary is going to be new, and most of that interior has to be replaced. For Penn State, the challenges are not only going to be to try to be competitive out of league and in league, but naturally the question is going to be what the future of the program is like. And I think as far as the next 7, 10 years, it looks pretty rough. After that, maybe they can get out of it. It is a proud football program, but right now it's one that's in disarray and one that the NCAA had no mercy toward whatsoever. O'Brien has to not only do his best to coach a quality team or make that team into a quality team, but also has to try to get new commitments to believe in Penn State and at the same time try to make sure that his current and incoming players don't change their mind and go somewhere else. I think Penn State's going to finish fifth and probably win five games this year. I don't think the outlook's good for them whatsoever. If you look at the next team we're going to talk about, that's Illinois. They did something that nobody has done in the history of NCAA football before. They won their first six games last year, and then they lost their last six games last year, and that costed Ron Zook his job. Terrific recruiter, but had a hard time developing the talent that he had. Tim Beckman now takes over for the Illini, and Beckman... Um, he made Toledo a better football program in his three years there. As a matter of fact, last season they averaged over 200 yards rushing per game, and maybe that's what Illinois needs. Nathan Shieldhouse returns for another year at QB for the Illini, and that's really going to be a big asset in my opinion, especially if that ground game gets it going. So now Shieldhouse doesn't feel like he has to do all the work by himself. Um, for the Illini, uh, Josh Ferguson will be the main guy at running back. And they have to also um, replace the receiver, um, A.J. Jenkins. Uh, they lose him. And we will see how Illinois does with some new skill players. Offensive line looks good, though. Four starters are back except for one. And if you look at the uh, defense for Illinois, this is an area where I think they're going to be pretty strong in. Even though they lost the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year in Whitney Merciless, they returned eight starters, including the um, – Linebacking core in Jonathan Brown as well as Terry Hawthorne. Two good linebackers. Uh, they come back another year in Champaign along with the defensive end uh, Michael Buchanan. Illinois, if you're looking at their schedule, toughest non-league game looks to be the one at Arizona State. They beat the Sun Devils last year, but ASU has a new head coach, and that game this year will be in the desert, so that will be a challenge. Um, I look for Illinois to be one of the more improved teams in the league. They've got a really good defense and a veteran QB. I think an eight-win year is possible for them and naturally another bowl game. I don't look for them to win the uh, leaders. I think Wisconsin is, is going to, um, once again, win that division. But I think Illinois will be competitive, and I look for the Illini um, to improve by that win total by about two games. Looking at Indiana last season, wins were very hard to come by because they only won one game in 2011, and that was against an FCS opponent in South Carolina State. Heck, Indiana couldn't even beat Ball State, and Ball State was pathetic. Indiana's offense did very little last season. That was surprising considering their new head coach, Kevin Wilson, knows offense big time. We saw that at Oklahoma when he was offensive coordinator. Well, speaking of Oklahoma, Wilson's offensive coordinator this year will be Seth Luttrell whom OU fans remember from the 2000 team as starting fullback. And, of course, Luttrell's been an, an assistant coach at other places since. But now he gets his big break to call plays for the Hoosiers. And at least they return more starters than any other team in the division. 17 in all, and that includes Trey Robertson, the QB, as well as Stephen Houston, the uh, running back. Um, all the offensive linemen are back except for one. So look for Indiana um, to improve, but then again, if you can't prove upon 1-11, and 11, you don't deserve to be a head coach. So there's nowhere to go for the Hoosiers but up. And most of the defensive players are back for the Hoosiers, but they were pretty much dead last in the Big Ten last season in both rushing and passing defense. So we'll see if safety Mark Murphy um, can become one of the leaders of this defense. I think he's capable of being all Big Ten but he's one of the few bright spots on the defense that last year got lit up like a Christmas tree. Indiana's schedule out of league isn't tough, but then again, it wasn't tough last year, and they went 1-3 and three out of the league. Um, so I would say Indiana's probably going to win three or four games this year, 
Maybe 2013 is the year with as many players as you'll have coming back that season that Indiana can be flirting with five or six wins and maybe a minor bowl, but it's not going to happen this year. The Purdue Bowlermakers, well, last year they floated with the bowl bid and they got one for the first time in a while. And Purdue returns the majority of their players. So that's something good in West Lafayette, Indiana, including Caleb Turbush, the quarterback. He's back along with a terrific special teams player and the guy they'll use at wideout. That's Raheem Mostert and running back Akeem Shavers uh, returns too. But the offensive line last year, they were inconsistent. So if Purdue plans on getting to another bowl game, the offensive line um, needs to step up a little bit. Purdue, just like Illinois, returns a lot of starters, and that includes uh, defensive tackles, uh, Kawan Short, as well as uh, Bruce Gaston. And defensive line will be stout for Purdue. Defensive backfield, that's a bit of a concern, and that's where they really got hurt last season. Purdue's out-of-league schedule, uh, not very demanding except for the game at Notre Dame, which will be a loss. But in Big Ten play, there are some shots and some victories. Um, I think this is a team that could very well be 7-5 and five this year. As long as they can get to 4-4 four and four in the Big Ten, um, they should be pretty clear as far as becoming bowl eligible and getting back to postseason play, which would be for the second straight year. Purdue looks like a team that's not going to be a Big Ten contender, but they're definitely going in the right direction. And that leads me to Wisconsin, the two-time defending league champions. Just like last year, this year they're going to have to replace the quarterback and they're going to go the ACC route. Last year, they got Russell Wilson from North Carolina State. He did a good job. This year, Danny O'Brien from Maryland, who was ACC Offensive Rookie of the Year two years ago. He's back, um, but this time he'll be playing for Wisconsin. So that right there answers the quarterback question. Running game, Heisman Trophy contender. We're talking about Monty Ball, who last year almost had 2,000 yards, and they've got depth as well with James White. You lose a terrific receiver, though, in Nick Toon, but at least you have one um, great receiver coming back for Wisconsin, and that's Jared Aberderis. Um But really, to me, what's going to be the key for Wisconsin, the difference between them being good and them being a national contender will be the offensive line, where they have done such a good job. But this year, it's a big rebuilding job, replacing three of those starters up front. If they can get Good production from that offensive line. Look for Wisconsin to once again be back into the thick of things as far as having a high ranking. Offensive line, again, has been a strength for them, but this year they've got to replace some bodies. So we'll see how Wisconsin does there. Six starters return on the defensive side for the Badgers, and that includes David Gilbert, their outstanding defensive end. The schedule for Wisconsin out of league play, as usual, is ridiculously easy. Um, in league play, um, they'll have their challenges. Ohio State will be a tough game. Um, Michigan State, um, the rematch this time they get them in Madison, which will help. But there's an early road game um, to start Big Ten play, and that's at Nebraska. Last year, Wisconsin um, beat Nebraska pretty soundly, so you know Nebraska has been waiting for that. But to me, Wisconsin should be at least a 10-win team. And with Ohio State and Penn State, not eligible for the Big Ten title game. That comes down to four teams, and Wisconsin's clearly better than Illinois, Purdue, and especially Indiana. I look for the Badgers to win the leaders, but I look for Michigan State to win the league. I think you're going to look at two terrific games once again in the Big Ten between these two schools. They had two good games last year. They split. It wouldn't surprise me if Wisconsin, with the home field advantage, beat Michigan State the first time, but I'm going with Michigan State at a neutral location in Indianapolis. I think Michigan State's ground game, and I think their defense, I think the defense of Michigan State will make the biggest difference in this um, Big Ten title game. I look for Michigan State to finally get to a major bowl game, something that they have not done since the BCS era. That's my look at the Big Ten. My next preview, we're going to talk about Florida State, Clemson, as well as the rest of the Atlantic Division in the ACC. Catch you next time.